Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steven Nguyen. I'm a pharmacist and I own 52 units of real estate. Uh, for those of you new to my channel, you know I've been in process of buying my new build. And as you can see, I'm finally moved in. This is my second day that I've been living here. So trying to get it settled down, but wanting to do a full tour later on. But today I had a great question in the comments and I wanted to answer this question because uh, that was a great question. And this is from uh, John Lamb and he said, um, can you make a video on what are the basics of due diligence when you are shopping out of state for multifamily? Um, like a list of deal breakers as far as state laws, utility setup, cap rates per state, areas. Are there some states you stay away from? So I thought this was a really great question. And I think I have a, a, a detailed PowerPoint video, a course preview, talking about uh, multifamily due diligence. But really want to, and I'll link that uh, to the comment down below. But I, want, I really want to talk about the basics of due diligence. So when you uh, submit offer on a multifamily property, you typically start with something called a LOI or a letter of intent. And from that letter of intent, it's a quick one page non-binding agreement. You want to set out your purchase price, your down payment, your due diligence window. Uh, typically, I want a 30 day uh, due diligence window. Uh, with a clause as well as a 30-day financial due diligence window. So the fastest you can close on an asset is about um, 60 days. So let's talk about due diligence. So once they sign the contract, the window hits now. So for basic due diligence, um, it, there's financial due diligence and there's physical due diligence, which includes the inspection. So the financial due diligence, usually I do this uh, before I make my offer. So you want to get a T12 which is the last 12 months profit and loss statement, you want a uh, recent rent roll and the lender is gonna ask for this anyways, so you might as well be proactive and get these documents. And um, I want to understand, okay, where are the, what's the utility set up? Is this all bills paid? So all bills paid means that the landlord covers all utilities. They cover the water, they cover the trash, they cover the gas, the electricity. I try to stay away from these um, properties, but just know that I've converted a lot of tenants, like my 26 unit, it was all bills paid. And I converted it so when the new tenants uh, came in or when we renewed the leases, we said, hey, uh, we're not going to raise your rents, but now you're responsible for your electricity. You're responsible for your gas. And ideally, that's what you want, right? Typically, the landlord uh, will cover the water and the trash, and then the tenant will cover their own electricity and their own gas, right? So that's typically... Um, layout and if it's all bills paid don't worry it's okay as long as you know up front um, but make it your goal to convert them to covering their own utilities because it, it's it's not motivating when you pay $500 flat it covers electricity covers gas and you just blast the AC you blast the heater with the windows open right that's kind of the the uh, classic uh, joke or, or the classic story here um, so basically uh, for due diligence uh, that's what I'm kind of looking at uh, for financial and you want to make sure it makes sense. So typically I take the rent roll. Um, I'll compare that to the monthly income and hopefully it should match around five, 10 percent. And then the expenses, I always assume it's about 50 percent of the expense is going to be um, what I underwrite with. Right. So if you're grossing ten thousand dollars a month in, in, in income, I'm assuming my expense is five thousand dollars. But this is excluding your debt service. Right. This is not including debt service. And that's how you calculate your NOI. So once I'm under contract, typically I'll ask for more proof, whatever I can, like, hey, can I see a sample utility bill, a sample electricity bill, a water bill, a gas bill? Um, you know, can I see um, any repairs I've been done on the property in the past like five years? Was there a new roof? Was there new plumbing, a new electrical? Ideally you want proof so you can show your insurance. So it's just asking for a lot of documents um, during the financial due diligence and the Physical due diligence, which includes the inspection, I'd say that's really important. So what I do, and if you watch my videos and you follow me, you know you want to inspect all units. I don't care if you have 100 units, don't sample it, inspect all 100 units. Because one unit that you don't inspect can make or break your deal. And you don't want surprises, right? You don't want surprises. You want to have the money. You want to be ready. You want to be proactive, right? And I apologize, it's like sunshine right in my face, right, right here. Um, so... For me, it's really, um, I'll do inspection. And for me, uh, what are some kind of uh, deal breakers out the gate is if there's like major, major issues that I'm not being reimbursed on, right? So I, I don't care if I have to replace the whole plumbing infrastructure, but um, 
I would ask for a seller repair credit. Let's say I did an inspection and found out the roof needs to be replaced, right? And I did this on my 26 unit. Um, it's not a deal breaker for me, but I'm going to ask, get a quote. Okay, how much does it cost to get a new roof? It's $30,000. I'm going to send that quote to the seller and say, hey, uh, you need a new roof. It's end of life. Here's the inspection report. Here's a quote. Insurances will not lend on this or insure this property unless I get this fixed. So can you do a seller credit of ideally thirty thousand um, dollars? Obviously, it's negotiable. So you know you can ask for thirty. They might give you fifteen. Take whatever you can get. Right. Assuming the deal is good enough, there's a lot of upside potential. It's a good deal. Right. So for me, that is uh, not a red flag. You know, any problem has a price attached to it. So you just need to find that price out from your general contractor. How much does it cost to fix and are you willing to deal with this issue, right? So everything has a price. So, you know, you do an inspection. Uh, ideally, you want to be there and then you want to talk to your property manager, have them there, have your general contractor there, get quotes. Okay, how much does it cost to fix this? Do I need to fix this? If I fix this, what rents can I get? Like, these are the type of questions that you're going to be asking and I detail a lot of it more in my uh, due diligence master class, I think, power course preview. So I'll, I'll put the link down below uh, for reference. Uh, anyways, moving on. So for me, deal breakers. Ideally, I want to be in a landlord-friendly state. Like if I had to choose between being a landlord-friendly state like Oklahoma, I'd rather do that than being a non-landlord-friendly state, right? I want to be in a low property tax state versus a non-low property tax state. Oklahoma is that. And ideally, um, you know, I, I want to be in an area where it, it's, it's growing, right? You don't want to be, buy in, you know, some cities in Mississippi where it's a population decline, right? Because if the population goes down, there's no, that means there's no jobs there. That means that uh, there's no rental demand and the value of your apartment is based on your income, right? So if your population declines, your rent goes down, your NOI goes down, your value goes down. That's no good, right? I don't want any of that. So, um, for me, uh, deal breaker, um, like I said, I, ideally I want to evict people easily. In Oklahoma, 15 day eviction notice, if they don't pay, um, pretty easy, right? So for me, ideally, um, you know, keep in mind I own rental properties in California too, um, but ideally I want landlord friendly laws. I want uh, low property tax. And, um, you know, so to me it's not too complicated, um, but you know, hey, you can make a lot of money in, in California or non landlord friendly states. Um, in terms of utility setup, as I mentioned earlier, I prefer not all bills paid. If someone's all bills paid, it's not the end of the world. Just convert them over to um, paying their own utilities once you renew their lease. And whatever new tenants come in, they're going to pay their own utilities. So just make that up front, right? Um, cap rate per state and area. So for me, I, I kind of buy my multifamily in uh, more cash flow markets. So Oklahoma, it was an 8 cap when I bought it, but with interest rates being higher, it's maybe 8 to 10 cap depending on interest rates. Um, so for me, I like cash flow. So I like to buy in states at a higher cap rate to offset my uh, single family homes in California, which is kind of a lower cap rate, right? So you want balance, right? Like, so California, more lower cap rate, less cash flow. Um, Oklahoma, it's um, more cash flow, higher cap rates, right? So I don't necessarily shy away against low cap rates, but you want that balance, right? You want that balance of um, some real estate is low cap and some is high cap. So that's how my California is my low cap, my Oklahoma is my high cap market, and they balance each other out, right? Um, are there some states that you stay away from? So me personally, I don't like snow, right? So for me, uh, imagine the picture of the USA map and draw a smiley face on it. That's the Sun Belt. Whatever's underneath that, that's what I prefer. I don't like snow. I don't like dealing with snow. I don't like dealing with burst pipes. I don't like dealing with flood zones. I think Louisiana. I don't want to be in a flood area because it's a terrible to get insurance. Um, so that's where I stay away. I keep it really simple. Just no snow and no flood zone. And don't be in a high crime area, right? And then don't be in... Um, an area population decline. Like for me, that's kind of my criteria. Um, and let's see what else. And the question is, isn't it scary buying out of state when you can't see it often? So, you know, it, it, I get it. There's definitely advantages to seeing your property, right? Like if you can drive up physically see your property, but reality is if you want to scale a real estate portfolio, if you want to build something big, uh, it's not scalable, 
right? So it's fine. If you're okay owning a couple of single family homes, apartments within your vicinity, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You can make a lot of wealth doing that. But for me, um, California is not a cash flow market. Um, and I want to invest in Oklahoma. So I have a, a great property manager there. Um, to be honest, I bought two apartments in Oklahoma. Um, and I visited it just one time when I bought my first apartment complex during due diligence. And now I just really rely on property management. And yes, by relying on third party property management, the property managers know that you are out of state, you're not there, so they could cheat you. That's part of the business, right? They could cheat me. They can say, hey, Steven, um, which I'm going through right now, uh, you have a plumbing issue in unit number 13, um, and um, it's gonna cost $5,000 to fix it, and uh, um, there could be no plumbing issue whatsoever, and the property manager can pocket $5,000, right? There's no way for me to really verify that. Um, that's why I try to ask multiple people. So, for example, my 20 unit had a plumbing issue, it was gonna cost three thousand um, dollars. She called the coordinator or the maintenance manager called me, and I just said, "All right, cool." And, but I want to trust but verify. So I, after I said, "All right, I authorize it," no choice. Then I uh, texted the uh, the COO of the company and said, "Hey, uh, can you touch base with me on uh, the plumbing issue?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm not aware of one, but let me follow up with it and to follow up with you." So you know, either A, uh, this person could be cheating me, or B, it's actually legit, and I want just extra eyes on it, right? Because hopefully one person's honest uh, with that. And if you really want to go ham, then you can, you know, maybe, uh, you know, have someone say, "Hey, can you just drive by and see if they're actually doing work on this?" But it's part of the business, right? Like uh, I've probably been cheated without even knowing it, being honest, and that's just cost of doing business, the cost of building wealth, um, and. Let's see, do I take flights in my rental property to get the boots on the ground before closing? So yeah, ideally, like if I were to buy a next apartment complex in Oklahoma, ideally I do want to fly there to check it out again. And at that point, I'm gonna check up on my uh, two apartment complexes. So, you know, I, I do want to trust my verify. Uh, you know, so far I haven't been burned, it's been great. Um, you know, these people have done a lot of renovations with me, but I'm not immune to them, you know, doing contractor special where, hey, you know, 500 bucks to fix this and they can pocket that money, right? So that's just the cost of doing business, and if that makes you fearful, then maybe you should just invest locally, right? Or just like for me, I used to have that fear, but I bought my first single-family home out of state in, in Alabama, sight unseen, and uh, you know it's been doing great. And once I did bought that, it really opened my eyes to buying out of state and trusting people. But just know that they're gonna cheat you, right? You're, eventually, you're gonna get cheated, so you have to uh, build a reserve to mitigate for that, right? So, you know, hopefully this answers your question. I really love this question. Hopefully this gave you some value as to uh, my thought process and due diligence and my mindset in buying out of state real estate. And uh, please let me know if you have any further comments or questions. And uh, please uh, like, comment, subscribe if you're interested in buying your first apartment complex out of state and need help and guidance and mentorship and coaching. Uh, check out the link down below um, and reach out to me directly if you're interested in a discount code. So please let me know. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and hope to see you next one. Thank you so much.